Coming up, we begin a three-part series delving into one of Macintosh's most secret and powerful abilities. It's Hands on Mac, next. Hands on Mac comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether they're working in the office or remotely, visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Mac is brought to you by LastPass. Allow your remote workforce the ability to do their best work securely without jumping through hoops. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Hey, everybody. Leo Laporte here. Time for Hands on Macintosh. And uh, I got this uh, question, actually, from the Twit community, our forum, www.twit.community. Mr. Homebrew says, I've used Mac for a while now. And I have some geek cred, but I've never utilized folder actions. And I would love to hear your take on how useful they can be. And then uh, Philo Digum says, uh, in conjunction with something like Hazel and our keyboard maestro, can you give Vitici and Sparks a run for their money? Of course, they're the Apple shortcuts experts. But shortcuts hasn't come to Mac OS yet. I think it will eventually. Meanwhile... Going back to the dim, dark ages, we've had some very powerful capabilities kind of under the hood of the Macintosh. And you know me, I like to get under the hood. Uh, we've done that before with the Terminal and Homebrew. This is going to be equally geeky. Let's start with folder actions. It is no longer on by default, I'm sorry to say, on the Macintosh. It's something you have to turn on. So I'm going to show you how to turn it on. And I'm going to show you some of the built-in folder actions, because yes, there are some. Then in future episodes, I'll show you how to create your own. But let's go to the Macintosh right now. And I'm going to create a new folder that's going to be the folder we're going to use for this. And I'm just going to call it test. This is my test folder. But you can do this with any folder on your Macintosh. First thing to do is to turn on folder actions. Now we do this with a right click. And before I get to that, I'm just going to mention that on modern Macs, we're running Catalina here, there's already something called quick actions. This is kind of the Mac OS equivalent of iOS's share sheet. Quick actions let you attach right-click actions to a lot of things. And as you can see, we can turn on some simple finder actions like markup, trim, create PDF, and rotate. These are useful. When you add a new app, you'll see they'll sometimes add these actions. This is um, a good thing to know about. These are third-party extensions you can use to customize your app, uh, your Mac. You can even have them appear on right-click. But folder actions are kind of older and a little bit more mysterious. And to get to them, I'm going to have to scroll all the way down to the bottom of my contextual menu. This is the menu you get when you right-click on a folder or command-click on a folder. You know, when we go to services, and by the way, we are going to do a much more extensive uh, show on services in uh, weeks to come. But as you see, there are services that are added when we install apps. Bear, OmniFocus, Vox have done that. But right here, there's one, no matter what you've got installed in your system, called Folder Actions Setup. This is something we have to select to turn folder actions on. They're no longer on by default on our Macintosh. We'll get a dialog box that says, Confirm Service. Finder wants to use the restricted service Folder Actions Setup. And that gives you a little hint why Apple has turned this off by default. I think they see it as potentially insecure. Don't worry, unless somebody else, some evil maid, has access to your Mac, you're perfectly fine to use this. This is an example of something that's on the Macintosh that is widely used by certain industries. In this case, for instance, the pre-press industry uh, for desktop or other kinds of publishing or photographers. Um, they want to be able to say that whenever I copy something into a folder, you process that. And you'll see that when we turn it on, there's already quite a few scripts. These are, you see the extension SCPT. These are Apple scripts. Uh, 
So AppleScript is a very powerful automation language that's been built into every Mac for years and years and years. It is uh, still around, I suspect, in time. They'll either be emerging with iOS's shortcuts or maybe even a replacement. But for now, AppleScript is there. And you can see some apps, particularly old, older apps like DevonThink, even install their own Apple scripts uh, into the system. There's quite a few image Apple scripts, and uh, there's some other Apple scripts that will, in some ways, be a template for getting started. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a script called test, and I'm going to choose one of these built-in scripts to attach to it. So I can say, give me an alert that there's a new item been dragged to that folder. That would be useful if you had a folder that automatically received downloads, or maybe you had a shared folder that people could copy things into. That's the new item alert and there's a couple of those because i guess the original one is an older one and there's a newer one uh close subfolders postscript to pdf that's kind of cool i could copy a postscript file there it would automatically make a pdf out of it um, and for photographers there's quite a few useful little scripts here add an icon duplicate as a jpeg duplicate as ping well, i see a lot of ridge scripts maybe Maybe those are left over from um, an older version of uh, Mac OS that was installed on here. I haven't. That's interesting. I haven't seen these before. That'd be my guess. Duplicate is a TIFF. You can even. I don't know. This is available on in many places in the Mac. Apparently, this is a common thing. Flip an image horizontally or vertically. <laughs> I love the info to common. In fact, let's use that one. That will take the EXIF info in an image and put it in the Macintosh comment field so it's easy to read. So now I've turned on folder actions. Actually, I haven't turned them on quite yet. As soon as I check this box, I've turned on folder actions. And again, this is gatekeeper at work, and this is why this is a little different on more modern Macs. We have to give it permissions to access a folder in the desktop, so I'm going to do that. If this folder were stored somewhere else, you'd, you'd get a pop-up saying, permission requested to access this folder in that location. So I've enabled folder actions. You could see I've enabled it on this folder. You can add other folders. Now that folder actions are turned on, I can create more folder actions. So I've enabled this capability. And you can see this is the script I've attached it to. I can even, and this is very handy, edit this script. So I'm going to edit it right now. It's going to open another program you probably didn't know you had, which is the Apple script editor. <laughs> and I, I do that because if you're going to learn how to use folder actions, it'll be very handy for you to know how to script. So it's very useful, as always, when you're learning a new programming language to look at existing code. Um, Apple script is not my favorite programming language. What they attempted to do is make it very English-like. Things like using terms from application Im image events and stuff like that. Uh, it's English-like, but I find that difficult. Anybody who's done actual programming might have the same uh, objection to this. You could kind of recognize the programming structure. The indentation helps. You see if and else. You see try, which is probably a familiar thing to uh, people uh, for with Python and other languages. On error, that's what the try leads to. You try this. If it fails, then give us this error result and so forth. So it's good to look at this to understand it. Trust me, you don't have to create your own code. We're just going to accept it as is. It's turned on. And now when I copy an image file to this test, the data, the special data will be copied into the comment section. Shall we try it? I guess we could. Let me uh, let me go get an image file here. I don't even know who this is. I'm going to copy this over here. And once I do, that Apple script is going to run. It's even going to ask me at the first time because it needs to do this. This is, again, all this security stuff. You only have to say yes once. We're going to say OK. And now, let's see, inside the test folder, oh, it's still running. Oh, it looks like it failed. That was the, that was, remember the try error? That was the error. Um, you may find this, this uh, in many cases, some of this stuff is so outdated that uh, it doesn't work anymore. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, yeah, well, maybe it did work. It's created a folder called processed images. There it is. Let me get the info on this and see if it did put something in the comments. 
No, it didn't. So it looks like it failed. That's okay because that's not really an important thing. In fact, in the weeks to come, I'm going to show you how to create your own scripts, both with Automator. You kind of see if you want to delve into Apple Script how to do that, and with a program that makes this a whole lot easier. So that's folder actions. You turn them on. Oh, I should show you one more thing. Uh, I'm going to open. There's a program called Folder Actions Setup that's hidden away. It's in the System Library folder, but you can open it with Spotlight, and that's what we opened here. So, just so you know, that's if you want to get back to that. We can add scripts. We can write our own scripts, and we will show you how to do that in future. Uh, and we can add folders through this dialog. So I've enabled folder actions. I've attached a folder action to my test folder. Uh, you can play with the ones that come with your computer or perhaps come with applications you've installed. That's really the only negative these days on AppleScript is it's become kind of an old feature of Mac OS. It's one that Apple really never wants to take out because so many specialized industries like the pre-press industry use it and use it heavily. It's one of the reasons they buy Macintosh computers. I, I, I can imagine, for instance, video editors might have watch folders they can drag clips into that automatically organize them or process them. There's really the sky's the limit. Anything you can do in any scripting language doesn't just have to be Apple script. It can be Perl. It could be Python. It could be Ruby. Anything you can do in a scripting language, you can attach to a folder and have it run. So you can see the sky's the limit. This is a really nice mechanism. Uh, I feel like Apple Script may be on its way out. Maybe shortcuts will be integrated with this in the future. I am going to show you next week and the week after two other ways you can use folder actions that will be perhaps a little bit easier for you. I, I think it's a really useful tool. In fact, next week we're going to show you a program you can buy. It's not very expensive called Hazel that really takes this and makes it so much more useful and so much easier. That's it for our episode. Thanks. We're brought to you today by LastPass. Can you manage identities and promote good security behaviors while your employees are remote? You can with LastPass. Get secure password storage and convenient sharing, streamlined logins, centralized control for IT, and access from anywhere. When user identities are centrally and securely managed, a business can ensure that the correct employee is doing the right thing and has the right access. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you stay more secure. That's lastpass.com slash twit. That's it for Hands on Mac. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, we will talk about Hazel, the best little cleanup utility ever. And we're going to continue on with our Folder Actions series. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time in Hands on Mac. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, host at Twit TV. Got a question for you. Have you gotten tired of how bad your photos are looking every time you post them to Instagram? Better yet, have you gotten yourself a new camera and you can't quite figure out why the images just don't look that good? Well, I have a solution for you. This is my show, Hands On Photography. Each and every Thursday, I sit down and share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer and a better post processor. So subscribe today at twit.tv hop to learn more.